What's up guys, it's your boy the Piscean Predator, we're back with some TPP True Crime Talk, and uh, we on another day of this Murdoch trial. Today was a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more entertaining, a little bit more informative, we learned uh, a lot more about the overall evidence that the um, prosecution has. Um, we finished up with a lot of like the uh, technological evidence, um, dealing with you know Sled and the detectives and whatnot. The questioning, the cross examinations, and all that good stuff is is pretty much out of the way today. And they started in with um, witness testimony. Um, they, ooh man! Before we get into that though, as they're going over kind of like the pinnacle of the evidence, I would say probably like the nail in the coffin. Um, like Alec Murdoch's Murdoch's whole defense is his his timeline he gives and what he was doing, his, you know, alibi. And the digital footprint, the digital evidence just paints a whole entirely different story. And then Nell McCoffin is his son literally makes a uh, Snapchat video. Like, I mean, let's say maybe 15, 20 minutes before him and his mother are murdered. And in that Snapchat video, um, you can hear Alex Murdoch in the back. So then what that brings us to the witnesses today. The witnesses today were friends of uh, Paul Murdoch. And um, one of those friends that actually received that video, right? Because the video was supposed to be taken of his dog. His dog had something wrong with his tail. His dog was kept at the kennels at the Murdoch estate, hunting estate. And, um, in that video, dude, you hear Paul, you hear his mother, and, um, you hear Alex, straight up. And not only do I feel like I heard it, the detectives feel like they heard it. And then, to make matters worse for Alex Murdoch, both the witnesses that were brought up today that were friends of his son, like really good friends, one was a best friend, one was a roommate, um, people that had spent a, a long time with this family, with the Murdoch family. I mean, a long time staying at their estates, you know, camping, you know, hunting, shooting guns, all fishing, all that type of stuff. They both, one said 99.9% .9 sure, and the other one was 100% sure that, that was Alex Murdoch in that video. His voice was in that video in the back, um, talking to the mom about... Uh, a bird that they found that was dead that one of the dogs had got a hold of. Um, that was... <sighs> you could do all the back and forth, you know, defense and prosecution, and they could play their the word games and the, and the manipulations, but basically that right there is... <sighs> that's huge. And then they started covering the ballistics with the, these witnesses as far as, like, them knowing what firearms were on the property, which ones belonged to who, how, which ones were used. And, um, I mean, the witnesses fully understood that there were two AR-15 blackout, 300 blackouts on the property that were owned. Black one and a tan one. Black one was fitted with thermal optics, which they have in the court as evidence. And the tan one, which was a replacement for a previous one that was bought. And the tan one is missing okay and here's the thing is the tan one's missing it's got a red dot optical on it so that can be used even with minimal light outside you can still use those to shoot and that is the same uh 300 blackout that one that's missing the tan one is the same gun i believe that they're going to show or at least they're going to show the bullets that were fired from that gun during practice that are up by the house outside on the porch by the, in the flower bed the those those recovered cartridges are going to match like ejection wise the markings on them are going to match to the cartridges found at the murder scene and now that gun's just magically not on the property a 300 blackout those are expensive and after they've already had one stolen in the past um it doesn't make sense that you would have a second one stolen. You're pretty sure that type of gun you'd be keeping put away pretty nice. 
And then on top of that, the witnesses say that there's they've never recalled the family talking about any theft on the property, anything missing. Um, and the first AR-15 that went missing, or the 300 block, I'm sorry, um, that went missing out of uh, Paul's truck at a party, I believe. I don't think it was on the property. So, yeah, man, it's... I keep waiting for the defense. Like, they, they have, like, I, yesterday I felt like they were, they were mounting something. But today... All they could do is try to undermine a little bit of the evidence, which wasn't really that great. I mean, there's nothing they could undermine. And then after that, they just basically were trying to make the relationship that the witnesses have with the Murdoch family and Alex in, in particular seem really close. Like Alex was a good guy and like, you know, this and that. But it's not looking good. I think even the witnesses, as much as they don't probably want to believe it, as they're sitting there on the stand learning more things that they didn't know about. Like the fact that the day of the murders, Alex uh, had found out about, I think, a settlement or a suit against him for like almost $800,000 on the day of the murders. So when one of the witnesses found out about that, he had no clue about that. He, you could see he was a little shook by it. Um, both the men that I saw testify today, they... You could tell it was tearing them up to have to, to get up there and tell the truth because as they were doing it, I think they were realizing what time it was. But yeah, man, this case is actually getting it got a little bit spicier today. A little bit spicier, a little bit more interesting. So overall, it's looking like he did it, in my opinion. In my opinion, no, trial's not over yet. But as far as why, if he really had a drug problem that long, drug problem that long life full of privilege being looked at a certain way and then all of a sudden now he gets caught up in in some fraud he gets caught up you know in this whole thing with his son in the boating accident um disgraced lawyer and now he's getting tagged for even more money and we don't know if there was any behind the scenes issues with the marriage if they were fighting if there was rumors about he might have a mistress you know this and that but it's just, I don't know, man. It's not looking particularly good for him. And in my opinion, like I said, I think this comes down to he's trying to save, he was trying to save himself. Figured probably like some, some like crazy thing that happens to his wife and son attached to his son's boating accident and all the stuff that was going on with that. Like he had that happen, you know, people would just forget about the disgraced lawyer part and, and all that other stuff. So man i don't know it just uh it is what it is guys it's uh it's looking like he he might have did this literally to take the heat off of himself and i don't know what kind of psychosis that you would have to have to do that but that's where i'm at guys that's your boy and uh that's his opinions i have plenty all the time um yeah so hit me up though down in those comments like share subscribe uh, hit that bell notification, hook your boy up, send me some traffic. Come on though, comments, bro. Comments. Let's get let's get that popping down. I want some conversations. Alright guys, it's your boy, Pisces Printer. Much love y'all. I'm out. Peace.